Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. We are here at our final session of this uh, semester, if you will, the uh, Leadership Lunch Series. So thank you for everyone joining in. And we have something a little bit different. We thought this would be appropriate for this last session. And here's the context I want to give for introduction. Lynn University, as we've talked about, the athletics department is one of the model athletics departments of higher education and one of the most elite athletics departments of higher education. And with that said, we have two Olympians in our history of our 37 or 36 years of, of being a athletics department. We have two Olympians. One is Melissa Ortiz. She played for the Columbia National Soccer Team in 2012 and 2016. The other Olympian is Tal Aurel, our current baseball student athlete. Thank you, Mr. Crosby. I would like to personally thank each and every one of you for taking the time and being here. For the next couple of minutes, I'll be speaking a little bit about my background, where I am today, and what the future holds. I'm not speaking here today to tell you what to do, but to open your eyes and see what's surrounding you. I promise you, by the end of this, everyone will personally relate to this in some sort of way, if not now, in the near future. To begin, my name is Tyler L. on the Lynn baseball team. I am 24 years old, born and raised in Israel for the majority of my life. When I was six years old, my family relocated to Aventura through my father's work. In the beginning, first grade, I did not speak English at all in an all-American English-speaking school. Every morning when my parents would drop me off at school, I would cry from the uncertainty and fear. The fear of being in the classroom was so over overwhelming, I needed another outlet to allow myself to communicate with something that had no language. That's when I got familiar with baseball. For me, it was a getaway from not speaking English as I could be myself, as well as yell at everyone in Hebrew. When I was 10 years old, my family moved back to Israel. I told my dad, it's okay, I'm staying here in Florida. You guys can go back without me. There's no baseball in Israel. And that's when my father found the Israel Association of Baseball. In a small country with only one baseball field, about 800 players over all age groups playing in the country, about 10 baseballs to train with the whole year only for each team. Not much can help a kid in becoming a better player and pursuing his dreams, becoming a collegiate athlete with these as the only resources we had, but you have to work with what you have and get the most out of it. At the age of 18 in Israel, everyone goes through the military. Men do three years and females do two years. When it was my day to get drafted, October 29, 2014, I was taking in a bus, cut, curtain shot, driving for hours to an unknown place with a bunch of newly drafted soldiers from cities I've never heard of. Regardless of everyone's background, education, wealth, or position in life, out there, we were all equal, dealing with the same struggles. I found myself with these people in the desert with no phone, no family, or a close by Lululemon store. I was sleeping in a tent with my newly equipped M16, looking up to the desert sky, desert sky and, and questioning how in the world will I continue three years of my life like this? And what I do with this weapon I'm stuck with now? It was another stage in my life that brought on such uncertainty. That's when I remembered myself as a kid, crying from the uncertainty of what the future holds, but also remembered four years after, I did not want to return back to Israel. In another thought, I told myself that all Israelis go through this. Millions have done it before me, and millions of people will do it after me. That's what kept me going. While serving in the military, I was recognized as an elite athlete, a grant given to 150 soldiers per year out of 200,000 to total soldiers to allow them to continue their athletic career and representing the country on the international level while still serving in the military. In the morning, I was a firefighter, but in the afternoon, I was a baseball player, hungry to chase my dreams. During my service, I got special permission to play in Czech Republic League and the following year in the prestige Dutch League. During my first game in the Netherlands, a couple months before heading to the States, I slid to the base and broke my femur. Still lying down on the field before the ambulance came, I was sure this was the end of my career. How can this happen? Four months before I was heading to college to pursue my dream, and now an injury uh, some people don't even recover from. Again, crying from the, from the pain and uncertainty of the future, it was yet another moment of uncertainty that shaped who I am and where I am today. When I landed back in Israel, my mom asked if I prefer staying a year in Israel or still going to the States. That's when I decided I'm giving it all I got. It's now or never. Luckily, I had the best physiotherapist from the military helping me to recover. 10 days after getting released from my service, still on crutches, I flew to pursue my dream. I knew I'd face a lot of struggles. 
struggling, uh, struggling through my first week of school, I looked up in the sky and asked, and asked myself, how in the world am I gonna get through four years of college like this? I need to take 40 different courses, give out lectures, have a language barrier, playing sports, all while watching over my health. I knew I'd face a lot of struggles. Struggling, uh, struggling through my first week of school, I looked up in the sky and asked, and asked myself, how in the world am I gonna get through four years of college like this? I need to take 40 different courses, give out lectures, have a language barrier, playing sports, all while watching over my health. My roommate back then said, just wait, college will fly with a blink of an eye. And all I want to do is punch him in the face. But yet again, thinking this is temporary, millions of people around the world have completed their education. Why wouldn't I be able to? Now as an academic senior, it's my time to tell the freshmen and sophomores on here that college will fly by with a blink of an eye. Being a student athlete, we all face the same struggles, full of uncertainty and fear. This could be on the field, in classes, mentally, back home, or even financially. This is where our resilience forms. This year, some of us will have to make a buzzer shot to win the game, score the winning goal or driving the winning run, face a bunch of assignments due all in one day on a topic you have no idea what's it about. This is, this is when, instead of stressing even more again from that uncertainty, we form, uh, we form that comfortable zone in the back of our minds, as millions of people have done it before and millions would do it after us. As much as it is sometimes tough, every minute is 60 seconds when you're facing the toughest day or the best day in your life. But it's how you use that one minute, using your resources, remembering how far you've come and making space for everyone around you that is supporting you and has supported you along the way. Remember, what you're struggling with at the moment, another student athlete struggled with last year and another one will struggle with in the future. Our one, moment, our one minute is four years. From freshman year facing the uncertainty of school to senior year of facing the adult life following school. With COVID-19, schools around the states had a tough decision to make over the summer, either taking the easier path and going online like the top schools in the world, such as Harvard, Princeton, and Georgetown. This move probably saves the university a big chunk of their expenses, as well as not having to deal with the struggles and uncertainty of COVID-19. On the other hand, going against all recommendations and going in class, schools such as Lynn. This move is not just for educational purposes, but is to force building proper connections with one another. Everyone on this call forms Lynn University Athletics, 374 student athletes, all coming from 39 different countries from all six inhabited continents around the world, as well as handpicked 31 staff members, each one on here sharing a special story and language. Some of the international students and some of the local students on here see each other more than they see their own personal family throughout the year. As Dr. Katrina, the Vice President of Academic Affairs said in Series 2, now's the time to make connections and develop resilience. For us, connections means resources. Only the top businesses in the world have resources from 39 different countries they can count on. We all face struggles, but this is the time we, to use each other. Some of us are better in sports than others. Some, some are better students than others. We all take the same courses regardless of the sport we are in. I had a class yet that there was another student athlete attending. Reach out and get to know who you have surrounding you and don't be shy to ask for help. If you get to meet two people from the athletics, uh, from the athletics um, af uh, athletes and staff, it'll take you exactly four years um, to meet each other and you'll even have a month to spare to go to the beach. I want you to look at the Zoom at who is in the square next to you. How much do you know about him or her? Which country is he or she from? What's her next step in life? I promise you, at least one person from this call in a couple of years We'll, we'll be trying to make business somewhere and we'll use a resource, a connection they have made from their time at Lane Athletics and think back at this conversation today. In a couple of years, you won't, remember how many, you won't remember how many goals your teammates scored or how many minutes you got to play, but you remember the personalities of your teammates and coaches, as well as who helped you to get, to get uh, through, the, uh, through the way. Ed Paske, the commissioner of the SSC mentioned, when you're dealing with failure, keep moving forward. It's how we move forward with each other off the field and on the field. Angie, the, the deputy athletics director said, the power lies in the ability to handle stress. All these comments talk about times we struggles, not when we're laid back and everything, going, when everything is going in our favor. When we're down by two goals in the game, a couple runs down the ninth, or how we handle an upcoming final. Baba, the coordinator of athletics, of athletics operation mentioned, the resources we have on campus. 
career connections office, building resume. But the biggest resource we have uh, is, on, is everyone on this call. We spoke last week about the powerful personal branding tool. We are currently branding ourselves, thickening our skin and developing who we are for the future. In addition, we're not the only ones here developing. As much as you learn from the coaches, they learn about you the same way, your culture, personalities, and how they can become a better coach too. As you see, all this connects and concludes the leadership series. The nine words Devin Crosby, the athletic director mentioned, all connects to one another to go under and form spirit, service, and strength. Coming back to my story, I've never been the best player on any team I played on, but the biggest strength I had is my ability to observe. Use the resources I had to tackle whatever challenge I was facing head on the best of my ability. The next upcoming year is a crucial one for me. I'll be competing in the upcoming Olympics. Looking back, all the struggles I, I faced was just getting me prepared for this once in a lifetime experience. And trust me, I'll be using everyone on you here as my resource is getting there in the best shape I can. It could be on the field, in class, or even in the cafeteria. To conclude, everything passes and ends just like this conversation we're having here. The way we use everything we have is how we build our resilience and future. And don't forget, whatever you do, millions of people have already done before and struggle through the same thing. Look around, observe, and learn. And don't be, sh and don't be shy to ask for help. I wish everyone on here the best of luck, and I'm always here for anyone on here. Thank you.